Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is conversation number two. Should the Most High accept the serpent congregation marriage between man and woman with a ring, not all rings now, we did wear rings. We're talking about the ceremonial rings that you exchange in a covenant agreement on the altar with the serpent pastor. The serpent pastor and all the witnesses of that serpent congregation coming into agreement and bearing witness to this arrangement. While you exchange that, those ritual vows between each other. Should the father accept that union? Well, we have to go and check out the scriptures. So... When we're dealing with the scriptures, number one, you're dealing with a a book that was given to Yahshua. It wasn't given to the whole world, okay? You got to remember that. It was given to us for an order that we would follow within our walls, within our borders, within our gates. That we may know the commandments, remember the commandments, practice the commandments. It was for us and our servants and handmaids that were there in the land with us. Who joined themselves to us, whether uh, free or bond or uh, brought with money. So even they would fall underneath these commandments concerning uh, marriage but the ones outside ones of the other nations they're a spittle to him there is nothing they are unbelievers they are part of the wicked and the father isn't even dealing with them he has dealt so with no other nation except for us so he's going to teach us and set us right now, remember, we was the ones supposed to teach them and set them right. But they refuse as our nation of people, all these different nations of people, they refuse to accept the Most High's ways. So they come up with their own rituals for between them and their so-called mighty one that they worship. And that's what happened to a whole lot of us here in United Snakes of America when we took on their religion, we took on their culture, their ways, and uh, we did as they did. They went up, they go before the serpent up an altar get, and get married, so do we. And then the question is, does the father have to honor the serpent and his marriage? Ask yourselves the question. I want y'all to, somebody bear witness with me. Answer the question in the comment section below, please, so I can know your thoughts. This is a conversation between the brews and even the gent believing awakened Gentiles as well. Answer the question. Do you think that the father has to honor that contract? And I'm telling you, if you know how righteous and Kodesh set apart he is, you know he's not going to sit there and honor some other so-called mighty one that they worship's contract between him and his people and where you once was tied to that you're not anymore you're no longer in bondage underneath those 
those things that were set forth in this world. You're being set free from this world. You're coming out of her. And a lot of Hebrews not thinking about this at all. You know, they're looking at the laws, statutes, commandments, and they're trying to apply it to someone who don't want to even follow the law, such commandments. Someone that the father doesn't even recognize. He's not even recognizing that person. Now, here's where the difference come in. If you're in the land and you, you're scattered abroad, you're still a Hebrew and you end up marrying a Gentile. And let's say y'all come together in a Hebrew contract. That's different. It's underneath the father's way. It's being done right the way he say he do it. And he will bind that contract. Now, uh, he also would search the heart of that woman. And he would know that, okay, she will come underneath the con you know the full bond of the covenant as she go as she's learning so he knows these things and certain relationships like that he would even honor if let's say if the the other one is unbelieving but they accept the Hebrew man and his ways and his culture and everything that was given to him uh, and the father puts it in him to stay because then he would uh, set her apart eventually in time but if he says cut her off you have to cut her off you have to do what he says if he's telling you to put that Gentile away you must put it away now, if it's a Hebrew woman, and let's say she's a unbeliever, or she doesn't want to obey or whatever, uh, it is written that we can put her away as well, even though the father doesn't like putting away. But if he knows her heart that she's never going to come to him at all, that's going to be a pure cutoff because she fall into the range of the unbeliever, the wicked. And he would not want any one of us in bondage like that. So uh, you really have to understand how the father looks at the righteous and the wicked. How he looks at the repentant sinner and the unrepentant sinner. How he looks at the um, the ones filled with his light and the ones filled with darkness. He come to separate. He come to comes with a sword to cut off that which is that's going to suck the life out of you. You know, when you think about the wheat and the tares, a tear would grow, if it's close enough to the wheat, it would choke choke out the wheat. It would take its nutrients, it would take its water, minerals, take its sunlight probably a little bit. Eventually, it's going to wither and die. And if you're one of the father's wheats, you think he's going to let that tear do that? Uh-uh. No. Brothers and sisters, we are waking up to truth. We are waking up to the ways of the father. We are discovering how far off we was. And we're discovering that we make, we make contracts with the devil in marriage. And you got the rings, Saturn rings, to prove it. You got the pastors 
that you stood before to prove it. You also have, if you went to Vegas or something, those chapels and where they, um, there's, there's a lot of idol worship going on with that. And any other religion that you done stood out under, or even a courtroom, you think that's not a religion? There's law, statutes, commandments right there before your face with a judge wearing black robes. Who you think he worshiping and honoring? And you got married before that one? And probably had the name G.O.D. spoken and J.C. spoken at the same time. False deities, false so-called mighty ones. The Most High is set apart, brothers and sisters. He, he would not want you to marry darkness or stay with darkness because it's going to do its dark work while you're right there. Now, I'm not saying y'all need to up and leave your spouses like that. You need to connect with the Father and through fasting and prayer and let Him lead and guide you to what He wants you to do because um, in some cases you wouldn't you wouldn't search the truth out like that in their hearts. You wouldn't do that because you love that woman, right? You, y'all had children and everything, but she still refuses to accept Yahweh and Yahusha and our ways and our customs. And she's getting meaner and meaner with it and hating you, starting to hate you because you won't join her in, in the hot, the so-called holidays their festivals and things are getting meaner and different between you there's a reason because your light and that person that you're with is darkness As we get closer and closer to the coming of Yahusha to really set everything straight, these are the things we're waking up to. This is just another area that we all need to look into and study and research and figure out, wait a minute, the Most High does not have to honor these contracts. Remember in Jubilees chapter 15, it talks about how the Father uh, gave them uh, messengers to rule over them, to lead them astray from us. I mean from Him. To lead them astray from Him. Since they refuse, they refuse him to this day. But they accept G.O.D. and J.C. and all of his, his ways, right? Turning you from the Father, telling you that the law of such commandments done away with, you ain't got to do even a Big Ten, as Cleflo Dollar says, turning their assemblies into money-making powerhouses. And you got married in front of all of that. The father isn't honoring that marriage. He's not. Now, if you're with someone who accepted and you did get married before the serpent's assembly, you need to think about redoing that ceremony the Father's way. And in that, I know that once you become His, but it may be something you want to do. Get rid of those rings and 
redo the contract like we used to back in the day. But in his name, in his honor, in his ways. And repent of that serpent contract. Father doesn't have to honor that. He, he he doesn't. Just like any of um children out there that was born in fornication or adultery, he doesn't have to honor that either. That wasn't done the right way. But you do have to look at each individual case from the children, whether they have faith. Because salvation is indeed by faith alone. So if they got faith enough. And the father accepts that faith. Whatever illegitimacy is made legitimate. By their faith alone. And uh, I've seen a few cases like this. Brothers and sisters. And it was a. Uh, Astonish me, you know, because it seems like that goes against scripture. And there's other scriptures where it says one thing and then something else is allowed, like the Moabites, but we weren't supposed to have nothing to do with the Moabites. Even to the 10th generation, they weren't welcome into the congregation, right? But then there was Ruth, right? She was... She was illegitimate, but she came in by faith alone. Her faith, she left all her people, her customs, her ways, her father, her mother, cousins, aunties, uncles, everybody she grew up with. She left all that to go home with Naomi and her people and Naomi's high power. She wanted to follow all of that. And she came in the land by faith alone. Now see that? The marriage was contract was over between her and her husband. But she decided to stay with Naomi. And the result of that, her staying with Naomi coming into the land and being accepted was King David. Y'all see the difference right there? With someone who was an illegitimate, who wasn't, we, whom we wasn't, ain't, we, we're not even supposed to be marrying them. But faith is something so powerful. It's powerful, y'all. We got examples of faith by itself and letting in the Canaanite. Remember that woman? They tied that that um that red piece of string. Well, she, she was told to tie that red piece of string around her doorpost. That was a symbol of her being covered by the blood that she may not die. When they entered that city and, and they destroyed the city and, and killed all the people. But her and her household were spared. Yeah. A Canaanite woman. And guess what? The contract, that their agreement was honored by the father. When she helped us and she helped those escape that city when it was let down by a basket, by, by ropes. And when they, when the uh, Hebrews came to take the city, she put the blood on the doorpost of her house. I know like on the Passover. We put the blood on the doorpost house and a death angel passed over. All who put the blood over the doorpost of their house, the entrance to their house. When well, she tied that ribbon at the entrance of her house. And everybody knew not to uh, 
enter that house and, and kill who's in that house when they saw it it was as the blood blood covenant now the right way to do this marriage with the father is to be virgins both male and female virgins and they're supposed to come together and join themselves together in marriage and bind that contract in blood when the male enters the female that was a contract made and um, if you want to really look at it you've been married to your first all along and you've been cheating, fornicating against him and committing adultery by marrying other people all along but you wasn't underneath the covenant you was underneath the serpent's covenant and his Sunday worship assemblies you wasn't awakened yet to the father's ways you were underneath another nation's ways of course he knows that and you were not taught it and that's why when you woke up and you gave your life to the father and you agreed with the covenant he covered your sins and he washed all that clean all your past sins and now he's helping you correct yourself and come into the uh, bond of the covenant and do right by him and you're under that grace that way you have time to get it right practice it learn it you think he wants you to be under bondage while you're learning it you would have made it and other, your, your spouse may not have and they're just going to wax worse and worse and get wickeder and wickeder brothers and sisters that's what's going to happen they're going to get worse and worse and they're going to bring, bring hatred and destruction into the household between you and between both of you and even the, if there's children of all the children too so there's a lot to say what you do with the children what to do with the children well let the father handle that one there but there are examples of what we did when we married an un unbelieving unbelievers they got put away and there was no punishment behind it either because they weren't recognized in the eyes of the father at all so you have to really look at that as well but he'll tell you what to do, brothers and sisters. You got any questions, comments, or anything you would like to say concerning the subject? Uh, please put them below. This is just a conversation. Whatever I said here is between a Hebrew and a Hebrew, between a Hebrew and a Gentile. So y'all let me know your thoughts. And with that, I'm going to say shalom.